Today we are going to learn about the Cura software. This here on the screen is the initial window of the Cura software. On the left we can see the settings and on the right is the user interface. To zoom in into the user interface we scroll in and out. To rotate we use the right click button. The blue portion over here depicts the build volume of the 3D printer. The checkered area is the cross section of the base and the rest is the height. Now we begin by loading an STL file. We click here on the load button and then bring in the desired STL file. Here we are going to be using a nut as an example. Here we can use the scroller to zoom in, zoom out and the right click to rotate. You might have noticed these three black lines at the corner of the build volume. These three perpendicular lines depict the front left corner of the 3D printer. If we place this object near to these three lines, this means that the object will be printed in the front left corner of the 3D printer. Same in the case if we take this object farther away from these lines that means at this corner this means that on the 3D printer the object will be printed in the right end corner. Now we will start with some view settings. Here on the right you can see the view mode. Currently we are in the normal mode. There are other modes which I will explain one by one. The most important of these is the layer mode. Once you click on the layer mode, what it does is it shows you all the slices of that current object. If you can see on the right, this shows that this particular object is made out of 59 layers. We can actually drag this cursor from here to see how each and every independent line of this object has, has been made. Here you can see the first layer the second layer, third layer and so on. You can see the object being built up layer by layer and rising until and unless it reaches its last 59th layer and gets completed. After the object is complete, the printer stops and returns to its home position. Other views are like X-ray. These are important when you have an object which have internal features. Let me change the object to understand X-ray view better. Say for example, this object. This is the model of a whistle. Now, if we choose the X-ray button, you can actually see the insides of the whistle, which here is a ball. There is one more view similar to X-ray called transparent. These both views are similar to each other but have their own advantages and disadvantages. You will learn more about them once you start using the software. Last but not least, the overhang mode. I think I'll have to choose another object to show you how it's used. Overhang mode is basically helps you identify the areas where you need might, might have to add some supports. Now as you can see, as I clicked on the so overhang support and, uh, viewpoint, this portion of the object gets red. Also, this area of the object turns red. You can actually see me converting. Normal mode, overhang mode. This shows that these regions in the object might need additional supports. To give a better smoother finish while printing. 
So that's all about this view mode. Let's get to the rotate, scale, and mirror modes. For this particular object, if we want to rotate it, that can be done within Cura. Once you click on the object, you get to the, see these three options. The first one being rotate. As soon as I click on the rotate button, you can see three axes appearing around the object. I can choose any one axis and move the object in that particular plane. Example, XY plane, XZ plane, and the YZ plane. If you have noticed, the increments in the rotation are 15 degrees, 15, 30, 45. If you want to change the increments to 1 degree, press shift. To bring back the object from any rotation to its original orientation, click on the reset rotation button. This helps you bring the object into its original orientation. Also, there is one more feature called lay flat. This is very helpful when printing an object and bringing it flat to the base plate. Let me explain you. Say for example, you want to print this object and it was originally at an angle of 2 degrees or 3 degrees from the base. But visually, it seems to be right. Before printing an object, it is suggested to go into the layer view and check whether the object's first layer matches that to the actual orientation. Now you can see in the normal view that the actual first layer should be somewhat of this shape. Whereas in the layer view, it's in this shape. This means that the object is not laying flat on the print surface. To make sure that the object is laying flat on the print surface, what we do is we click on the object in the rotate setting, we choose lay flat. The lay flat button brings the nearest flat surface and sticks it together to the base. Now if we go into the layer view, you can see that the first layer cross section has is now same as that of the normal object. So that's how we use lay flat. Coming to the next option is scale. Once you click on scale, you see these settings. You can also see that the width, the depth and the height of the object are illustrated alongside the object. If say I want to increase the size of the object two folds, what I do is I can change any one of these scales x, y and z. So let's try with the x one. So if I change this 1 to 2, this what it does is it increases the size of each side with two folds. You can actually see the time of printing and uh, the weight of material used in that print in the corner. Now as you can see right now at twice the size, a time taken is 1 hour and 29 minutes. whereas the material used is 15 grams. If I bring it back to the original using the say reset button, the time taken is 21 minutes and the material used is 3 grams. I can also change the dimensions of the object by changing the lens of any side. Say if I want an object of 40 in the x direction and rest should adjust automatically. So this is how it's done. Or say if I want the object to have a height of 50 mm but the rest should remain the same. What do I do in that case? In that case, we will just unlock this uniform scale button and then change the dimension as normal. Say I want 50. Now you can actually see that one of the dimension of the object has changed whereas the other are still constant. To bring the object into normal original scale, we click on the reset. There is one more option in the scale option 
that once you click on this button the object becomes into the maximum possible size possible for this 3d printer you can see over here that this object has now had a bigger volume which is 157 157 and 157 mm i'll just reset it back last but not the least the mirror button in mirror we have three options mirror x mirror y and mirror z mirror z uh, let just have a look what happens when i click on mirror x you see mirror x mirror x so what it does is it mirrors the object in the x direction that means the mirror is placed along the yz plane you can see over here similarly in the y1 this is what, what happens so now the mirror is placed in the xz plane in z the mirror is placed along the xy plane you see so that is what mirror and scale and rotate are all about shifting on to our next parameter on the left the settings we have to make sure that two of our settings are constant which is the basic settings and the advanced settings in the basic settings make sure before printing on your shape project atl 3d printer the settings are set to these the layer height must be 0.2 mm shell thickness must be 0.8 mm enable retraction must be switched on bottom and top thickness must be 1.2 mm fill density must be 15 percent printing speed must be 35 printing temperature this is something that might vary depending upon the material that you're using every 3d printer filament that you get along with the shape of your 3d printer has its own temperature written over it please make sure that you enter the correct temperature in the cura settings before printing diameter and flow are here as usual 1.75 and 100 nozzle size is 0.4 mm in the advanced section speed of retraction is 40 mm retraction distance is 4.5 mm the quality also indicates initial layer thickness as 0.3 initial layer line with 100 percent cutoff object bottom zero dual extrusion overlap 0.15 in the speeds travel speed is 80 bottom layer speed is 10 the rest all are zero minimum layer time is five enable cooling printing fully fan is on so that's all if you're able to understand how to use the cura interface and if you're able to maintain the correct settings you will be able to make great quality products